Hi everyone, in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to create rice terraces inside of Cinema 4D R26 using Insidium's Terraform FX and Redshift. So I hope you enjoy this and please let me know what you think below or if you have any questions and of course please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. I'm going to get started and since I'm working in Cinema 4D R26 and I will be working in Redshift, I'm going to first go over to Render Settings and I'm going to change these from Standard to Redshift. And what you'll notice is that there's going to be a few changes in our viewport because when we change this to Redshift, now Red now Cinema 4D is recognizing that we want to work in Redshift and our settings have changed a little bit. Like you'll see you have Redshift over here. I actually pulled this out and put it in the top so that's why you see my Redshift panel up here where you have the Start IPR buttons and all the other buttons that you're used to seeing in what used to be the viewport render the Redshift viewport render. Now it's just in your viewport, which is which is really cool. Um, but now I want to get into what we're really here for. We're here to make some terraform effects, rice terraces. So the first thing we should do is we should go up to Insidium and I'll choose terraform effects and I'll choose terraform terrain and that'll give us our default terrain. As you can see here, I'm going to turn off the display colors just for right now because they're a little bit distracting to me while working. I'm going to keep the size 500 by 500 and I'll adjust the segments to 4000 so that we can get some extra detail while working on this. You can choose however many segments you want. The higher the segments, the more detailed your mesh will be. The fewer segments, the less detail. Like you can see just by upping the segments, this looks so much different than what it did before. It has a lot more detail in the terrain. These are the default terrains that come with Terraform terrain when you first load it in. I'm going to delete these because we're building our own from scratch. So now it's going to look like a flat plane without too much happening. If we click on Terraform effects again, you'll see we have an option to choose what kind of tessellation we'd like. I'm going to work in quads. You can work in triangles as well. You can enable or disable font shading. I usually keep it enabled. Never had that disabled. Um, it's it's the same font shader you'll see on a sphere to make it look round even if it is made up of polygons. It, it smooths it out when it renders. And you can choose to add an operator. If you go down here you'll see all of our different generators and filters. I'm going to add some noise. And right now we have it in the blending mode of add. And I'll explain this a little bit more later, but Terraform effects and its blending modes reminds me a little bit of Photoshop. If you're used to working in Photoshop and you're coming from a 2D background, this will make a lot more sense to you. But I'll explain that later once we have a few more, um, a few more effects on our terrain. Under properties, we can choose our noise type. There's different kinds. There's all different kinds of noises. I like the displaced turbulence for this situation. Depending on what you're doing, you might want something different, but I find the displaced turbulence has this nice smooth feel to it, which is really nice once we add on the quantize effect, which we'll get to in a minute. You can choose the number of octaves you have in your turbulence. That's the amount of detail. 
I'm not going to raise this up anymore because, because I want it to be pretty smooth for what we're doing. You can choose the scale of your noise. I'm going to probably keep mine at 100%, but if you want to edit that, you could. So now that we have our noise added, this is the fun part is clicking on terrain and we're going to go over to add operator and this time instead of adding a noise we're going to add a filter called terraform quantize and this is super fun i love this one look at that it just creates different levels on your terrain that is so cool okay so if we click on quantize You can click on properties and you can adjust how many levels you have. So right now we have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The surface must not go high enough to see the eighth one, but it can go up to a max of eight steps. And um, you can adjust that here. If you want it to look like this is a very tall, um, mountain with a lot of rice terraces on it. Maybe we'll up the count to something like 41, 41 steps. And this might take a few minutes to calculate. So we'll wait. Hopefully you have a very powerful CPU in your computer. And there we go, now it updates. I found that scrolling in and out kind of helped it update. Not sure if you'll run into that yourself. So now this is looking pretty cool. I'm going to choose a view here. Maybe we, we want this to be our composition and you can think about it a little bit and move around the camera, see what you like, what you like, then looks cool to you. And then when you're ready, click add camera. And now, since we've added in a camera, it'll, it'll save where we were at that moment where we liked this composition. So if I scroll out and then I'm like, oh no, I want to go back to where I was, you can hit the camera button. And something else you can even do is you can go under rigging tags by right clicking on your camera and you can choose protection and that will keep you from accidentally moving your camera. You can lock the position, rotation, and scale with this protection tag. So now that we have our camera locked and we have these really nice looking um, terraces with the terraform quantize, I want to add in some blur and that is another operator under filters and blur is a lot like what it sounds like it does it blurs things out like if i turn this off you can see the geometry and it's looking a little bit janky and that's because of the amount of detail in our mesh if we had less detail in our mesh it would look even worse but it, Another way to handle that is to actually just smooth it out with the blur. That helps a little bit. You can choose different blur modes. You can choose Gaussian. You can choose box. I'm going to leave it with box for right now and leave the radius at 2, I believe. But you can experiment with more. I don't want this to be too blurred out though because I want it to look like well-defined steps. But I did want it to be smoothed out enough where it doesn't look quite as quite as faceted as it did before. And if you click on operator, you can choose the percentage of your blend mode. So I want to explain what blend mode is at this point. And you can choose what kind of map you'd like to show. 
So the, the black and white determines um, either the slope or altitude, depending on which one you are clicking on. So if we choose altitude, it looks a little bit different than slope. And this will affect how your overall map would look for your terrain. So I'm just going to have preview on. I'm going to turn on slope. When we have slope on for the entire terrain, you can see that um, we have these really interesting lines because the black and white map is showing us the slope. So some places are very sloped and then the black places are flat so they have no slope. So you can tell the slope based on the white and black areas and the same thing goes for altitude. You could do that. And you'll see that um, if we turn off quantize all of those lines go away and you just see the noise and the blur. And blend modes allows you to adjust the blending between these effects. So if I click on blur and I decide that I would like this blend mode to be less, that would affect the overall preview for that map. It won't be as blurred out in here. It might be a little bit hard to see, but if you made this larger, you'd see it's less blurred out. I'm going to raise up the blurring a little bit more. This looks good to me. So the blend modes basically control how each one of these effects blend together and how much they're affecting the overall terrain. And you can choose the, the mode in which they blend. You can choose multiply, overlay, screen, a lot of the same settings you'd see in something like Photoshop. So that is how we build our basic terrain. So this is basically how you build up your terrain. And if you wanted to create a texture from this terrain, you can actually export this out. I'm not sure if you can see. But down here it says file and then you can write the file and save it wherever you'd like and then use that as a texture within your materials to control where the texture is. So I'll go over that a little bit more In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to create materials in R26 for Terraform effects for your terrain. So I'm looking forward to showing you how to do that inside of Redshift. You can follow the same steps in a different render like Octane. A lot of the nodes in Redshift are similar to the nodes in Octane and there's a lot of similarities even to the default Cinema 4D renderer or materials. So even if you don't have Redshift, you still may find this helpful for doing this in a different renderer. You just need to know what the equivalent is of the nodes in here versus Octane, but it's really a similar process. I've worked in all three renders. So I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to me. Don't be shy. Um, and I'll see you on the next episode, which will be covering materials. And then the following episode after that, we're going to make some fog and some clouds for our 
our terrain. So I'm really looking forward to doing that with you. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again soon on the next episode.